Hello and welcome to my first episode on my channel. This is Radha Rashwan, a process engineer with profound experience in project management. And today's video goes by the title, Sample Calculations for Sizing a Subsonic Flair Stack Using the Simple Approach as per the API 521 standard. I will just illustrate the example published by the API 521 with a demonstration of a calculation sheet that automates the calculations for generic use. But before we start, this is a design video, so I have to state a quick disclaimer. This video and spreadsheet are built for illustration and educational purposes only. Any actual design should be carried out by qualified engineers and on their sole responsibility. Our main goal today is to determine the flare stack diameter and height, and this will be done over four steps. First of all, we need to determine the stack diameter. Secondly, we will determine the flame length. Then we will account for flare distortion by wind. And lastly, we will calculate the flare stack height. These are the data input for our problem. I use the same values as in the API so that you are able to track the calculations and values easily. This is the wind velocity. This is the reference of point and we will get to this later. The Mach number. We'll get to these values later, but the API says from 0.2 to 0.5. The flow rate of the gas, the molecular weight, the temperature, heat of combustion, the CP over CV, pressure, the compressibility factor. We here used one as an ideal gas, but you can use any value in our calculation sheet. And the maximum allowable radiation for our reference point. The first step is to calculate the flare diameter, and this is easily done using this equation. We will need the, the flow rate of the gas, the pressure, this is the diameter we, which we are searching for, the compressibility factor, the temperature, and the molecular weight of the gas. So everything here is known, and for the Mach number, the API states that for low pressure flares, subsonic, we use 0.2 for normal operations and 0.5 as a peak. And actually these numbers are a little bit conservative from the API. So you will find easily in the field like Mach number up to 0.8. But as for the standard 0.2 for normal, 0.5 as a peak, except if the manufacturer of the flare stack allows for higher uh, Mach number and if also the, the local regulations uh, allows this. Using this equation, we calculated the inside diameter twice, once for Mach number 0.2 and once for Mach number 0.5. The second step is to calculate the flame length and this is done using this simple graph. We enter the graph with the amount of heat released, hit the line and get the corresponding flame length. The amount of heat released is calculated using this equation. The mass flow rate times the heating value. And we adjusted the units so that it is in kilowatts. So we hit this line and we get the flame length equals to 50 meters. To account for flame distortion by wind, we use this graph to determine where our flame will be after the bending that occurs because of the wind. We enter the graph with the ratio between wind velocity and gas velocity. Hit one curve to get delta x by L and hit the other curve to get delta y by L. We have just determined L from the previous step equals to 50 meters. So now we can calculate delta x and delta y, which are the displacement of the flame after tilting because of the wind here. Okay, so we know that the, gas, the wind velocity equals to 8.94, but we need to calculate the gas velocity. I've calculated it twice, once for 0.2 Mach and once for 0.5 Mach. The gas velocity is calculated easily using this equation, the volumetric flow rate over the cross-sectional area. We can determine the volumetric flow rate from the mass flow rate, and we can determine the cross-sectional area because we have just calculated the 
flame diameter in the first step. Then the last step is to calculate the flare stack height. First of all, we need to calculate D. D is the minimum distance from the apex center of the flame to the object being considered. So this is the object being considered. It can be human, it can be an equipment. It is the closest thing to our flare. And we need to calculate this distance, D. It is calculated using this equation. D equals to the root square of tau times F times Q over 4 times pi times K. Tau is the fraction of heat radiated, is the fraction of the radiated heat through the atmosphere. Because not all of the radiated heat from this epicenter will finally reach this person. As there is some humidity here, it will absorb some of this heat. But the API takes the conservative approach and considers that the the weather is dry, so that all of the heat radiated will finally reach this person. If you want to account for this fraction, you can use this equation. So tau equals to 1 in the API. Then we need to calculate F, which is the fraction of heat radiated from the source. And here's the table to, to determine F. This is the fraction of heat radiated. This is the burner diameter for different fuels. But we can see here that the largest number for the fraction of heat radiated equals to 0.299. So the API just takes 0.3. And in my calculation sheet, I used the three different uh, correlations to calculate F, and I took the average of these correlations. Then Q is the heat released, and K is the permissible limit. We can determine K from this table. Here, the API uh, used this case, but you can use any other scenario. This scenario, the K equals to 6.3. The heat intensity in areas where emergency actions lasting up to one minute may be required by personnel without shielding, but with appropriate clothing. If you have an, another condition, you can use the corresponding K. So now it is easy to calculate D, which is the distance from the apex center to the reference point. Okay, but we need H dash, the flare, st the flare stack height. We now know D, so we need to know R dash. R dash is easily calculated because we know already R is the reference point, this distance. We just remove half of X from it, XC, to get R dash. And when we know R dash and D, we can calculate H dash easily h dash then because it is equals to uh, the, the square root of d square by uh, minus uh, r dash square then we know h dash and we want to calculate h so, so we just remove yc from it which is half of y and we get to the flare stack height H equals to 33 meters for 0.2 Mac and 25.9 meters for 0.5 Mac. Let's go to our spreadsheet. This is the flare stack calculation sheet. We start by the data input, the wind velocity, the reference point, the Mac number, the flow rate of the gas, molecular weight, temperature, heating value, CP over CV, the pressure, and the permissible limit from the table. We started the calculations by 0.2 Mac, then you can calculate for any Mac. I will put in the description uh, part below how you can get this calculation sheet from me. In the calculation sheet you will receive all of these values will be editable, so you can change it and you can have your own design. But uh, the calculations cells will be locked so that you can not uh, corrupt the file. This is the diameter calculated as stated in the PowerPoint from the Mach number equation. Then we need to calculate the flame length. In the PowerPoint, we use the graph 
Here, I do not want you to use the graph, so I just make it in the form of an equation, linear regression from this graph. So I put the graph here and put the known points and then I am able to know the equation and then I used it here in the flame length cell. Again, to calculate the flame distortion by wind, this is the volumetric flow rate. It is calculated from the mass flow rate. Then, this is the gas velocity, the volumetric flow rate over the cross-sectional area. This is the ratio between the wind velocity and the uh, gas velocity. And now we can calculate x and y accordingly. In the PowerPoint, we use the graph. Here, I just put the known numbers on the graph and uh, used the curve fitting uh, techniques to determine the equation that will give us x and y directly. The fraction of heat transferred for the API, they just used 0.3. I used an average of three different correlations used in the industry. So this is um, the average of these correlations and actually 0.3 makes sense of the API. This is the distance from the reference point to the midpoint of the flame. I called it here S and the API called it uh, uh, D, no problem, you can call it whatever. And it is calculated here 49 meters. And the last step is to calculate the flare stack height. This is the R dash just equals to the reference point R minus half of X. And finally, you can calculate H dash from the triangular we showed in the uh, PowerPoint. Just remove half of Y from it and you have the height of the stack. And I have also performed Two sensitivity analysis, I want to share it with you using this spreadsheet. The first one, you can here see the effect of using a higher Mach number on the stack size. If you, can, if you are able to use a higher stack number, you can use a smaller stack height and smaller diameter as well. So, for example, this is 0.2 Mach you have to use a large height and a larger diameter. As the Mach number is increased, you can use a smaller height and a smaller diameter. I've also performed, also, of course you cannot do this if, except if the manufacturer allows it and also if your local regulations allows this. I've performed another sensitivity study to determine the effect of the distance between the reference point and the flame epic center on the flame length. If you need to um, be um, on a smaller distance from the flare stack, you have to use a higher stack with the same diameter. So as you approach the stack, you have to use a higher diameter. A, a higher um, flare stack height. Uh, before you leave, there will be a small competition and I will show the best answers in, on my next video. Today's question is, should we locate the flare upwind or downwind the facility and why? Put your answers in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you like the content and would like to see more videos from me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.